song you never heard of. Hey everybody, welcome to the Common Folk Podcast with Ben, Morgan, and Andy. Welcome back to Common Folk. Welcome, sorry, you guys <laughs> caught me mid-yawn. <laughs> You're boring me already. <laughs> the, yeah. Well, we haven't even started yet. I know. What would I like to say? The podcast for the people, by the people. That's right. There we go. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and one of those. Oh, yes. Yes. I, I have noticed some of the rural radio stations that I listen to, um, they've lost a lot of ads from uh, one beer company, and they feature a lot more of this beer company nowadays. Is oh. that right? I, hmm. I did notice that. Okay. That yeah. silver can you got? Mm-hmm. No free advertisements around here. None. None at all. No no free shout outs. No yeah. no name dropping. As they like to. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so we haven't been in the studio for a minute. A little over a week or so. So getting back at it. Um, hopefully all the stuff works. It doesn't have too many cobwebs on it. Mm hmm. But it seems <clears throat> to be working. So that's good. I think it's good to go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We. Um, a few things have happened over the last couple of weeks, and something that I was very interested in uh, is this whole PGA and Live Golf deal. Right. Um, and I thought it was a perfect topic for uh, Andy because you're in the sports world heavy. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. our sports guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I also thought it was a, a perfect topic for common folk because there's so many things going on and so many different things that you're hearing. Right. And I just want to put, again, our common sense spin on this. Here's what's really going on. Yeah. Understand this, you know. And I think there's a lot of people hearing the um, the stories, you know, on the news and so on and so forth, and they don't really yeah. understand the background. They don't really – I think there's a lot of people that are like, I don't understand what's going on with this thing, and I think they need to. That was me. Right. Like I read a little bit of an article, and mm-hmm. it was – page after page after page after page and i thought yeah. oh my god i don't have time no one has time for that so let's <laughs> give everybody the skinny here ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> yeah so uh well I, that sparks something that i'm kind of curious about so with you just kind of taking a, a bird's eye look at it a real quick look at it there uh-huh. morgan uh what are your thoughts on or what what what's your initial opinion on what happened and, and where you're at with it well, to me, it seems like someone else is trying to come into the game and put some competition on the PGA Tour. Mm-hmm. And someone else has another business or brand that's coming in mm-hmm. and, I guess, trying to get players to go the other side. I, and that's the thing. Like, I don't know the ins and the okay. outs, but I know that there's lots of money from a different country and things like that that are influencing things. But I really don't know. I don't know. Right, right. Like, why does there just have to be one thing? And I think I think we should put yeah, a yeah. little, uh, give a little perspective to begin with. So, first of all, myself, I don't golf. I mean, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. call myself a golfer. Like, I will here and there, yeah, maybe yeah. once or twice a year at yeah. best. Do you golf? Uh, I don't call it golf. I call it hacking. I'll, okay. Uh, like yeah. Ben, I'll go out two or three times. Right. I just played in a golf tournament over the weekend. Had a lot of fun. But it was a best ball scramble type of deal, yep. y- you know. Okay. So it's not like you're doing league or anything like weekly. It's like it's like somebody has to buy a shot every fifth hole. Okay. Yeah. 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 And as far as the game goes, I think it's fun. I have a great mm-hmm. time when yeah. I do it. Um, mm-hmm. I have a little bit of trouble doing it because it usually takes like four hours to do a round. Right. So that's right. tough to fit in. But I think it's a ton of fun. Um, I enjoy that. <clears throat> I don't know where golf got its start or, you know, any of these kinds of things. But I know I've got a lot of buddies that do it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have a tournament coming up locally. Is it in September? It is, yeah. For the Dig and Page Foundation. So, obviously, those guys yep. are on our website. We handle the merchandise for, merchandising for them, help raise money for the foundation. Uh, the golf tournament's going to be local. You know, so we'll be heavily involved in yep. that, creating all the items for that kind of thing. Um, golf is – it's a part of – day-to-day life for for many folks in one way or another yeah most people though don't understand uh, the professional side of the sport it's more of just kind of a fun thing for us right and there are a lot of entities and like everyone knows like the nba that's professional basketball Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mlb major league baseball that those are the big leagues and in golf for a long long time one governing body kind of took control and that was the pga tour and you're exactly right. Um, for the longest time, basically forever, 
other groups want to start a series or a few tournaments and the PGA Tour would do anything and everything in its power to shut that down. Like they want it all. They want all the players on their tour. They don't want any players on a different tour. They, they wanted all the control over the scheduling, over where they're going to play, and who's going to be playing in them. Um, so <laughs> your initial thought there is exactly right. And uh, uh, this, and what we're talking about, if people haven't figured it out, is the Live Golf Tour mm-hmm. uh, just merged with the PGA Tour. And it's been kind of a bloody back and forth mm-hmm. for a little over a year now. Uh, and it got so... Uh, gruesome that when Liv was getting ready to um, was making formal uh, deals with players for the PGA, uh, the commissioner, this Jay Moynihan, uh, he got on uh, CBS Sports and was talking with Jim Nance. You know, everybody knows mm-hmm. Jim Nance, and he went as far to say that well, they're just accepting blood money. You know, he he was comparing it to 911. So Okay, I read a little bit about that. Let's get into some of those details. So to keep it <clears throat> to get to explain kind of some of the basics, like some of this might sound kind of stupid, but PGA is <clears throat> Professional Golf Association or Professional Golfers Association mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. along those lines. Um as you said, this has been the authority in professional golf. <clears throat> I think all of these guys that play in it are like a member Yes, that, you know, and, they I, and they're getting dues. paid. Yeah, um, but it, it's it's very strict. Uh, you can only uh, share X amount of things on so many different platforms. Like they really have their thumb on it on these guys. Okay, on these but guys. do we not think that? Not trying to bring up something else, but doesn't NBA and yes football they all do this too? Yes. So um, they were just mocking that. So uh, here's you know basically I mean? here's basically what's happening. Um, and you, that's a great point, and this is and this is why it's so to me kind of like shocking and just dumbfounded that the PGA Tour could let it come to this. Okay, um, where they had to bend over backwards and eat their own words. We're getting ahead of ourselves here, yeah. but you've already seen it with the NFL, Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball had a World Series thrown because they were treating their players so bad. The Black Sox. Um, what was that night? Well, yeah, like we just watched it the other day. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> but I mean, uh, this is this has always happened at the professional level where the governing body, and it doesn't matter what sport or where you're at, uh, they get so much control. The NCAA mm-hmm. take they take advantage of their players, and they don't they don't cut them in on it. They're the ones supplying mm-hmm. you with the sport, mm-hmm. with the with the replays. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> without the players, there's no game. Right. And these governing bodies. Um, get so much control that they really start to be abusive uh, in that relationship towards the players. And that's all this really boils down to is the PGA um, was just taking such advantage of the players, um, the, the different platforms and where they would play, when they would play, who could play, um, that it opened the door for other entities and other tours to say like, hey, do you want to come over here and play? This never would have happened if the PGA would have just been a little bit, just a little bit more fair to their players mm-hmm. or, or to other like tournaments and say, hey, we want to be on that weekend. You know, let us be on that weekend and then don't bury us in a press release and, and put pressure on your players to choose between us or them. Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. if this is their home course or they're from this area, they should be able to come here and play without you, you know, penalize them. Penalizing them basically, yeah. And the PGA was doing tactics like that for a number of years. And I think, uh, to your point, to carry that on, I think they were, they were so big and so powerful mm-hmm. that they just felt like they were invincible. Yes. And they were like, "Nah, no one can touch us." So then, along comes here within the last couple of years mm-hmm. this Live Group. Right? What does that stand so for? So that's what we're going to get into. So Live is obviously L I V. And that is the Roman numeral for, what, 54? I think it's 54. 54. Yeah, 54. Um, and from, from the stuff that I've read, the idea behind that is that when they have a, uh, a tournament or whatever, mm-hmm. a live tournament, they're going to play 54 holes total. Oh. Where in the PGA, I think they play a whole nother 18. Yeah, it starts on Thursday. You play eighteen. You play another eighteen on Friday. Then there's a uh, there's a cut, um, and you you whittle it down. So then only an X amount of players play the next two days. Um, 
there's a lot of fun, fun and different changes with Live. It's yeah. much more conducive for the players. They wouldn't have to play as much. A lot of your big names got paid up front, regardless of where they landed. Oh, I, PGA was so bad about their purse, like winnings. Um, it's just been a fact for the longest time. Golfers made their money on their endorsements. <laughs> Winning a tournament really didn't do much to skew their pay scale from year to year, you know, unless you go on a heater and you win five in a row or whatever. But even then, your endorsements is where you would pick up the most uh, windfall of cash on that. was a uh, side story. I, I love the movie. Happy Gilmore, mm-hmm. but I've never really paid that <laughs> close of attention to. Was he playing in the PGA? He was in the PGA, wasn't he? Yeah, in that movie. Well, I mean, the fake PGA, right, like they right, made it a yeah, phony name, yeah, and yeah. then they were mimicking the Masters. You know, when he says "gold jacket, green jacket," yeah. who okay. gives a shit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. It's the green jacket that you win at the Masters, and that's okay. a big ceremonial yeah. thing. As last year's winner puts the new jacket yes. on this yes. year's winner. Yeah. And so there was a gold jacket in the movie, and it was just funny that they worked that little jab in there where he goes, gold jacket, green yeah. jacket, who yeah. gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and like you said, I mean, he was, and obviously he wasn't doing awesome. He was like mm-hmm. kind of at the bottom of the pack, right. but wasn't making much money. And then he started picking up ad gigs. Exactly. I think it was Subway. He was like the first. Talk about a hole in one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that I just thought about that. But anyway, so this um, live comes along, and they're going to start challenging mm-hmm. the PGA, right? And I don't know. You might know this. I'll ask if you do. Um, let us know if not. Whatever, we'll move on. But uh, that the guy that they had start that, and he's the CEO, is that Greg Norman, Greg Norman, right? And and this is where, if you want to look up a timeline, you can go back to the early '90s. Oh, really? On this, where. Greg Norman was always at odds as a player okay. with the PGA. Oh. Okay. And he would want to do this or not go to that tournament, and PGA would slap him on the wrist, you know, penalize him, whatever, fine him money. Uh, and then it really came to a head in 1994 when Greg Norman wanted to put together his own series of tournaments. Mm. And the PGA straight up went and fished out some of their big names and had them speak out against that and say, oh, do dang. not get, do not go on that series. We are the show in town, you know. And they're just protecting their brand, but man, they're just really they're being ruthless. Forced, yeah, being very ruthless about it, not showing any kind of flexibility. And their greed, I'll go back to it, their greed is what set the table for this whole thing mm-hmm, to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm, goes back so, to Ben hating money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always, there's always some, it, something. It's always behind. I was just going to say, was thinking too, was it? That the big wigs running the PGA just wanted the the money. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, number two, he was the number two player in the world, Greg Norman, back in 1994. And he announced that he wanted to start the World Golf Tour, which was just a eight, eight scheduled events is all he had that was going to start in 95. Um, and then shortly thereafter, you had, I think it was Jack, Jack Nicholas or Arnold Palmer's uh tournament was supposed to play like th- that following mm-hmm. week and they came out and uh Canceled Arnie, it. Arnie's like you don't want to do that you don't want to do that you're going to hurt the integrity of the game blah 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 and really just throwing Greg Norman under the bus it was kind of like this good old boys <clears throat> club and mm-hmm. they were just like yep no nope, yep. we're not that, gonna let this happen and that's another riff there is all right Arnold Palmer we'll pay you you know because you're loved and everyone knows you and there's even a drink named after yeah. you you know mm-hmm. you've won the masters uh, several times um, so we'll we'll take care of you, but you know these other 150 you know ranked golfers that are on the tour, you know Sorry. we don't need to take care of them, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not near as much. So they kind of like you said they kind of set the stage for something like this to come on. So apparently you were talking about Greg Norman there in the late 90s or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. He apparently didn't uh, quit. No, he did. I not. mean he 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 never no. lost that idea because here we are now. No, and then he got he got was approached um, by a Saudi Arabia group. <clears throat> Um, the Golf Saudi Federation, and, and, and anyway, what's going on is this this sporting group out of Saudi Arabia, they want to get more into tourism and things of that nature. And they call it sports washing, you know, uh, wash over all the human civil rights, mm, you know, infractions, yep, yep. and just use sports. Because, hey, if we're watching golf, then it can't be that bad. Or if mm-hmm. they got baseball over there, it can't be that bad. And it's it's worked throughout the years, and it's working again. And um, but I don't have, I don't look at it like um, you're accepting blood money. Because why does Saudi Arabia have money? Well, because they're getting it from the United States, from the UK. 
So, like, if you really want to take it one more step, mm -hmm. you know, why are the mm -hmm. Saudis so yeah. rich? Why do they got this yeah. endless pool of cash that they can just throw at golfers? You know, take it another step. So that's definitely a uh, part of what I wanted to talk about today. So the Saudis are backing this thing. Funding mm -hmm. it, yeah. Yep. They're the money behind it. Mm -hmm. um, we know, we all know, if you paid attention to news at all, that these guys do a lot of bad stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they were openly responsible for the killing of that journalist. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. They were, They've. it's been proven that they were behind 9-11, um, they, their human rights violations over and over and over. Yeah. Right. Uh, yet, as you said, we continue to funnel money to them yeah. by way of our fuel usage and, you know, and the oil and all these kinds of things that go along with it. Right. <clears throat> but the point is that a lot of these people are trying to make is if, if these guys are going to be in charge of golf going forward, then I'm done with it. Cause they're a bunch of criminals. Right. But then, like you said, they're, but then people aren't saying, on the other hand, well, I'm yeah. not. I'm going to quit driving my car. I'm not going to buy their their gas anymore, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. Right. And there's also a lot of products and deals that you know come from that part of the world that we're okay with, mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned. But for the the commissioner, about just over a year ago, that it is Jay Moynihan for the PGA Tour, mm -hmm. uh, for him to to go on national television in front of a, a major golf event, and he a direct quote is. You've never had to apologize for being part of the PGA. So let me let me. So he's saying. I mean, he's put it on the players. Let me put a let me put a little pin on that because th this is also a very important point. So this guy, as you said, is in charge of the PGA, mm -hmm. and here comes Liv and uh, Greg Norman was that his name, Greg mm -hmm. Norman. Yeah, and they are starting to try to recruit. PGA players. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was happening like two years ago yes. or a year ago or whatever it was. Yep. 21 maybe? Early January 2020. 2020, um, okay. Yep. So they're doing that and the PGA is getting really defensive and this Moynihan guy comes out and he says things like that. Right. You've never had to apologize for things that the PGA has done against mm -hmm. humans, you know, or whatever. So he's, yeah, he's yeah. talking straight trash yeah. about Liv yep. and the people behind it. And, and also trying to make you feel in a way that this is a moral decision. Right. Like you, if you if you stay with the PGA, this is the right moral decision. Mm -hmm. If you go play with Liv, then basically you're a traitor and you don't care about people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I think people need to understand that. Again, the, the common folk, common sense perspective, this is what came out of people's mouths. Jay this Moynihan, is what this, this the guy commissioner said. said yes. You don't care about gay rights, women rights, any of it. Human rights. If it, you go play with them. Yep. If if you jump ship and go with Phil Mickelson, and he was naming out players, you know, and just yep. talk, and talking about that moral dilemma. Yep. Well, uh, it's too bad that money's all that matters to those guys. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so then, yeah. so do you, have, do you have anything to add before I jump to this between then and what happened a couple of weeks ago with Moynihan and, and the recent – Okay, well, here, okay, well, uh, just like back in 94, what mm -hmm. we re referenced there, um, the PGA got a handful of their top players that were not going to jump ship, which, come to find out, they also had some deals in the works or that were happening where they were going to get, like, some profit sharing through PGA events. Okay. So, of course, they're not going to jump because they've already, they've already written a check or – you know, put their stake in the ground that I'm invested in this. Mm -hmm. So Rory McIlroy, one of the prominent players, uh, he was offered something like four to five hundred million dollars, four hundred million dollars to just sign on with Live. He there was no um, limit on tournaments he had to play in. He didn't have to make a final cut. He didn't have to shoot all fifty four holes if he didn't want to. It was just very. He could wear shorts. That's another thing. Like with Liv, you can drink beer, smoke cigarettes, ride in a golf cart, you know, all like these things. fun stuff, like real life. Very fun. And <laughs> real quick, when you're talking about ha Happy Gilmore, the memes that were coming out, man, because they're yeah. comparing Liv to yeah. Happy Gilmore. Because yeah. it, it, it is more like that. It's like, it you is. know, standing there on the tee box and, why is everybody yeah. being so quiet? Come on. And starts mm -hmm. throwing his arm. You know, it's, it's more like yeah. that, I think, right? Yeah. So did he take that? No, he did not. Okay. Tiger Woods kind of headlined it. Um, it's been speculated that he got offered somewhere around $800 million to sign with Liv. Once again, he wouldn't have to play in all the tournaments. He wouldn't have to make X amount of event 
you know, he could just do what he wanted to, but as long as he was a live golfer and he played in a live tournament, he would knock down around $800 million up front. Mm -hmm. Once again, unlike PGA, where you have to, you know, place within the top 10 to make real money, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're just cutting checks saying, hey, come over, here you go, here you go. So, obviously, a number of really good players, some of the world's best, uh, jump ship. They're like, I'm going to take that $65 million up front, mm -hmm. pick and choose when I play, play less, yep. be more relaxed, so enjoy it. So they offered it. that to how many? Like a decent amount of players? Uh, yes. A lot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Pretty much everybody on the tour got an invite. Okay. And, and you did have a, a few of the top 10 players in the world say, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Uh, Phil Mickelson, not that he's ranked in the top 10 anymore, but he's a, still a prominent player and will mm -hmm. place well in some tournaments. Uh, he, he was in lockstep with Greg Norman the whole way. And that ruffled a lot of feathers. I think you had a lot of a lot of these guys who were listening to what they were being told of, hey, this is not the right moral decision. You know, you need to stick with what you're doing right now. You know, tote yeah. the line, blah, blah, blah. And so they they did. They, they, yes, they did. They followed suit. They did. And even after, you know, this merger thing happened, uh, you, you still got those PGA guys, especially the ones that already had deals in the works, saying, I still hate live. I want it dissolved. I want it to go away. Well, of course you do. It's not your investment. Right. They, don't have, they don't have a choice now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if we go to that, uh, if you don't have anything else to add, so here in the last few weeks, mm -hmm. it was announced that basically all of that upper brass – came to some uh, yeah. agreement with each other, yeah. and Liv essentially took over the PGA. Right. And, and I I'm, I got the, the timeline up yeah. here in front of me, but um, one or the other, and there's actually three different entities involved here, but the two big ones were Liv and the PGA. Okay. And I think the PGA sued Liv first. Then Liv turned around and countersued them. And all that litigation, all the books – would have had to come to the forefront because there was a date on it now. Mm. Um, and it was in best – and this is my estimation, the people that I kind of trust and once again follow the money. Mm -hmm. Neither one of the sides wanted their books to be gone through. It was worth more yeah. to them to figure something out mm -hmm. than to uh, follow through with this looming lawsuit on both sides. And especially for the PGA where players could look at it and be like, oh, you made – that much money off my namesake and I didn't make anything, mm -hmm. you know, oh, like they didn't yeah. want any of that. Even like a, a tournament in Phoenix, Arizona, you know, where they had to pay through the nose to get the tour to grace them with their presence mm -hmm. over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Whoa, you made that much money off television alone on our golf course and you demand all these things and we don't get to play golf or have other golfers on there for three weeks and this and that. And this is what you paid us, mm -hmm. you know, so like they didn't want a lot of that stuff uh, yep. brought to the light. And live, they've been hemorrhaging money, but that I think that's kind of by design too. So a lot of folks were saying on the the, the counter side was, well, live had to make this deal because they're losing money. They didn't care. They have more money to I lose was than say, God. It that sounds like it doesn't yeah. matter. And I think that was another big part with well, that's what Jay Moynihan, which I don't trust a word he says anyway. The commissioner from the PGA. We're going to talk about that too. He, he said, he said, uh, well, we we played this perfectly. I mean, we. First off, we don't have enough money uh, to out-negotiate, out-wheel and deal a foreign government mm -hmm. like Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. We can't do it. So what we did was let this play out for as long as possible where we can get the best leverage. And after they saw that they were hemorrhaging money and, you know, TV stations weren't picking up all their events and things of that nature, uh, that's when we made this deal. Oh, God. So I— I, I think he has so much egg on his face. It's Why don't oh they God. fire that dumbass? So I don't understand how – God, I mean, I, I don't understand how anybody can think about that dude and how he runs an organization and what they did as being mm -hmm. uh, above board. Is he still yeah. head? <clears throat> yes. So this guy, as we talked about, mm -hmm. came out and said all, talked all this trash, mm -hmm. made everyone feel like – this is a moral decision. Made the players choose, and then the players that chose, quote-unquote, wrong, uh, just rained down on them. This, with, I mean, and he, he was, quote, 9-11 in multiple this interviews. This is what I'm saying, yeah. I yeah. mean, this guy it, was pulling out all the stops, telling you how mm -hmm. bad of a person you are mm -hmm. if you want to go affiliate with these people. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then this oh happens just a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and this dude is on interviews. I've watched him talking about how— 
much of a game changer this merger so is. So good for the game of how golf. How great it is for the game. <laughs> well, I mean, it, dude is on camera. He's speaking out both sides of his mouth. What the hell? Saying completely opposite mm-hmm. things. And and everyone's just kind of like, oh, yeah, well, 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 duh. Yeah. But why and, didn't they merge and, and then so, say. So, and the guy now, we, we should look it up and see, apparently is on medical leave for nobody knows why. Well, good. That's what I'm saying. Why didn't Liv say, yeah, we'll merge, but this um, douchey over here has to go? Well, I they think... Don't, they don't care. Again, it's all about money. Yeah. They don't care. I they, think he, he like, got assigned himself, like, one of the CEO or a head chairman job yeah. of this new, the, the new pact. Like, so a made-up position with a made-up league, basically two leagues put into one, he just gets to slide into the chairman spot. And now like, he's, like, on medical leave? <clears throat> Apparently, probably last I heard, I was listening to all these. They probably don't want different on articles, TV and they're like, "Yeah, Mo- yeah. Moynihan's on medical leave. Uh, we yeah. don't know for how long. He's not available to speak." How old is this guy? I've never seen him. I don't know. And they didn't. And they haven't even said like what the dudes, like what's wrong with them or anything. It's all it's all such BS, dude. It, it is. And in the end, the guy saved his own job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. I guess felt like he had to come out and say like, "Oh, this is so great," yeah. But is an absolute joker. Yeah, uh, totally. And and a lot of golfers, they were finding out that the merger happened because it happened late at night, you know, and all this other stuff, and it, and it wasn't made public. Uh, or the players on the tour and players on live, nobody knew about this. So I learned out about it the same time the best golfers in the world found out about it. About and they're their own part job. of the tour. And, 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 and one of the and one of the pillars that the PGA likes to stand on is it's a player driven, player run league. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Players had no idea. Mm-hmm. They were they were given their marching orders to cast stones at live, and they were doing that, and they're still doing that. Some of them. Um, and then, and now they're merged and now they're merged and, uh, Netflix has on a series, I think it's called full swing, a lot of fun. I haven't watched it, but I think I want to, um, just showing you how wild being a professional golfer can be, Mm. you know, um, they were, they were live doing a set when the text messages started going on with these golfers and like, Whoa, what happened? I can't wait to see that episode. Yeah. Like they found out on camera. Oh man. Yeah. So what did they settle? Like a number, they just merged companies. It's a new format. Like what is all the, Well, that's the beauty of this merger. Now nobody gets to see their books or any of it. Okay. Yeah. So all the, all the legal, (laughs) all the legal stuff that was going on all gets dropped. Right. But I'm just saying now, wait, well, first of all, that got dropped because they both sued each other. And they mm-hmm. decided to merge and, like, mm-hmm. basically shake hands. That's my speculation and a lot of others. Yes. Okay. But so now what is this league called? PGA slash Live? Mm, yeah. And is it the same amount of holes? Do no, the guys no, we've get already paid? talked about that. Okay, it's the, so it's basically so Live's P- format. PGA gets to yeah go back to their format and do their thing. Oh, wait. PGA is going to their format? Okay, yeah, that, yeah. I, that I didn't know. Yeah, so they're but, staying. And, yeah, and, and I think uh, the biggest thing that's going to happen here is those live players? They're going to get to play in PGA events, um, and that was a that was a huge rift the whole time. And the PGA was already, you know, like you were saying, speaking out of both sides, uh, because they were allowing live players to play in some of these major tournaments. And these tournaments, like the Masters, demanded it. Like, we're not going to get the television ratings if Bryson DeChambeau and Brooks Kepka and, and Phil Mickelson aren't in this tournament. And PGA knew that too. So they were they were you know kind of skimming off the top already, uh, as far as that goes. And I'm not sure what this the the new uh, playout's going to be, but you're you're obviously going to have the live golfers with the ability to play, and they'll get their. So there's technically is still separate. Like right, you're talking about live golfers, and there's still people that are just PGA. Those live golfers don't even have their PGA tour cards right now. They'll get them back next year. Is last year. And from what I understand, this live organization is is taking this over like they're the they're the bosses now they PGA brought in the is? money no live oh well they're gonna have yes they're gonna have a much stronger uh, hand yeah. in play here um but i think a lot of those uh tournaments and things of that nature they're gonna go back to the old rules and stay there which they never changed um but it will be kind of cool that i think some pga guys which they've already kind of drew their line in the sand anyway the outspoken ones they could go over and have some fun with live but they might not do that. Do now. you think that they're regretting not going over with Liv and taking that money? Yes. 
How I mean, could you not? I mean, so that's, and that's, because that's, now you're technically merged. That's part of this story is that these guys were all offered big money right. from Live up front, and they all followed suit and said, "Nope, we're not taking it. These mm-hmm. guys are a bunch of crooks. I don't want to deal with them. I want to keep yeah. things going the way they're going." And and they did it for the good of the organization that they were part of, the PGA. And then the PGA turned their back on them. Yes. Didn't even tell them what was happening. And said, eh, we're going to go ahead and merge with these guys anyway. And now, yes, you, Mr. Golfer, who got offered hundreds of millions of dollars before, Uh eh, that's changing now. Well, they they did just put some lipstick on that pig not too long ago. And I guess there's a new, like, profit sharing type of – with this new merger Mm -hmm. – uh, there's going to be a profit sharing type of thing put in play, and the PGA players that stuck with it, they'll have access to that. They'll they'll get enrolled into that if they want to be, or they can be, and the live guys can't be. Which I that just sounds like another big lawsuit to me. <laughs> you know, so like, yeah. if I'm a live guy, I'm saying no. I should be able to invest in this new entity. We're half of it. Um, so, and the the memes were were pretty hilarious when this news all came down. And one of my favorites was uh, uh, Rory McIlroy, who turned down four hundred million dollars, mm-hmm. shooting Jay Moynihan, the commissioner uh, <laughs> of Venmo. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean it, it's pretty messy right now. And uh, live so, live golf got what they wanted. So how would you describe that as? Like there's almost two teams. So this in is golf. This is or? here's a here's an expl- a quick explanation, okay. um, and this is from the New New York Times. So it says that uh, the PGA Tour will remain a nonprofit organization and retain full control over their over their tournaments and how they're played, but all the PGA Tour's commercial business and rights, such as uh, the television television for the televising of its tournaments are now owned by a new yet unnamed for-profit entity. Uh, the initial reports are they're calling it NewCo, um, and it will also own Live. This NewCo will own Live as well. Uh, so, it, you know, if that if that happens the way that they're saying that, that means there's one organization that runs all of this now, mm-hmm. runs both of them. So it's going to let them do their own tournaments and those kinds of things, but they're all part of one now. But you're kind of on different teams even though you golf for yourself. Kind of. It, like, everything yes is still in no? the gray. A lot of it's still in the gray. It is, yeah. Um, it, it does say there's I'm a lot I'm just trying to, to think of and, like, yep. you know what I mean, and NBA, a, and there's different teams. Like, is it like the NUCO, and then you have right. Liv, and you have PGA? I think the difference is that golfers um, – are individuals. They're yes, not, not I know. Teams. So that makes it. So these guys run around and they play tournaments right. and they make money per mm-hmm. tournament. Yeah. So they will be able to play in PGA tournaments and in live tournaments and make money both ways, I guess. So a big segment that we had on our sports betting show. Um, and there was always lines out there would a live golfer finish in the top 10? Would a live golfer win it? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was always a, it was a fun conversation for us to have. And this the, uh, this news, which even makes it shadier or feel like you're dealing more with a snake, back on May 21st, Brooks Kepka, one of the headliners that took that took that big money, mm-hmm. went over to live. Um, he got invited back to play in the PGA Championship, and he won it. Oh, stop! He won it, and uh, he was quoted. I'll read this quote. Yeah, I definitely think it helps live, but I'm more interested in my own self right now, to be honest with you. Well, of hey. course you are. Yeah. You know, and, and I have nothing against Brooks, Bryson DeChambeau, all those guys. Like, uh, <laughs> you're playing in it to profit, right? Mm-hmm. And if someone offers you $400, $500 million just to show up, you don't even have to finish mm-hmm. in the top 10. And you can wear shorts, get in a golf cart, whatever, play 54 holes. Uh, sign me up. You know, I, right. Uh, and the PGA Tour obviously showed you that they have no allegiance to you yep. or your players. Yep. They just showed you that. Yep. Didn't even tell you. Didn't even tell you that the merger was happening. Yep. And when it comes down to it, you know, you can guarantee <clears> – we, t- we touched on money earlier. You can guarantee the financial backing is coming from the Saudis. That's where the that's where the heavy part of the money is coming from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They will have control because of that. Money mm-hmm. equals power. That's how this shit works. Yep. Um, and we now watch professional United States – golf players uh, with the purse strings being handled by the Saudis. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. It is what it is. They're already do- There's already the big tournament in Dubai that, you know, 
that all of our top golfers have been part of for mm-hmm. years. So, like, I don't get it. I, you know, like, where are you going to draw the line? Well, it's okay if Tiger Woods goes over there and plays in Dubai. I mean, that's it's a big purse money tournament. And I, th- I think playing in a tournament is one thing. Like, they those guys should go play all over the world. They mm-hmm. should play in all kinds of different courses, and I think that's fun and neat to watch and all mm-hmm. that. But now they're essentially owned by mm-hmm. the Saudis. Yeah, to 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 a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it history always repeats itself. So I'm thinking this new entity, especially with the PGA still being half of it, they're still going to be greedy. <laughs> so oh, no yeah. doubt. I still think there's yeah. going to be like if if you wanted to, there's probably a, a pretty nice little roadmap now uh, how to start your own golf t- <laughs> league or tournament. Right? You know, um, you obviously wouldn't be able to do what Saudi Arabia does and just throw unlimited money at it. But there are some forces out there that could probably strike some type of equivalence of that. Yeah. You know? Crazy. I mean, it's, it is. It's like it's like the Death Star. It got too big for its own good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's that's yeah. that's what happened with PGA. And it gives you the, – the thing really gives me a glimpse into the character of people, you know. Mm. Like that Moynihan guy, there, I'm sure there's other people involved as well yeah. that, you know, this stuff all starts. Like as an example, in our business, if a competitor comes along – and I see them doing something or they contact me or they want to do something or whatever, mm-hmm. I don't just go out and openly start talking shit about them. That's mm-hmm. not what I do. What right. I do is I look at it and I go, <laughs> is there an opportunity here for us to figure out how to make something work? Mm-hmm. Like it may not be the way that I wanted to go it to go, but this is a reality now. Now you guys exist. Now mm-hmm. I have some more pressure. How am I going to make this work best for everybody? Yeah. But instead, these freaking guys – come out and just pull all the stops out, yeah. talk all the trash that they can talk, and then get beat anyway, and then come right. back and start saying it's all okay. Yep, we did it. We did it, guys. This is so good for the game. Yeah. <laughs> God, I can't stand it, dude. Without telling doesn't, their players first. Doesn't that really make, yeah. Doesn't that make your ears perk up, though? Because I think it's just turned into such a weird lightning rod uh, political ploy when whenever you hear 9-11. 9-11. Yeah. And for him to just bring that up time and time again, especially on that first national uh, interview with uh, with Jim Nance, I'd, right away I'm like, oh, we're dealing with the snake here. And there truly was, I mean, I heard a lot of different um, news stories and stuff. There truly was a lot of the families that were involved in 9-11 yep. speaking out about this you when there was un- talks about yeah, it. Yeah, you got to understand that. And, and they, were, that. they were saying like, look, you're, are you kidding me? Like mm-hmm. a, a, an American organization is going to get in bed with these people who are responsible for mm-hmm. my family members dying? Like that literally, people came out and right. said that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> I don't think you can argue them. Yeah. You, right. you know what right. I mean? But yep. the, as you said, it is what it is. And uh, well, how did even... Go back to that. I mean, how did they get access to some of that stuff? How did they get the money to even mm-hmm. pull that off? Yeah. Where did yeah. that come from? You know, like it, it, it being a world power like the United States is, you, I, I think it's, you can always, not always, but a lot of times you can trace that money or the root of the problem uh, back to a deal that was done by our government or with our government mm-hmm. or with people from the United States. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're going to put blood on their, their hands, I think you got to look at yourself too a little bit. Yeah, you know that's kind of deep and off the. Right. I mean, that's more yep. than golf, sure. And yep. that's kind of yep. where this conversation went. Yep. Um, but I just I don't like the fact that that they were really hammering these players and drawing them out uh, like they were terrorists. Yeah. And they're not. They're just golfers. Yep. They're just getting the best deal for playing the best golf. Yeah. You know, so like I, I that's what I really had a problem with. Yeah. And when it when it first came out, um, the thing that I, I felt like it was most similar to was. Uh, was the recent World Cup mm. was in uh, Qatar, mm-hmm. and there was all this stuff prior to the World Cup, the, the soccer World Cup, yeah. uh, where they actually had a Netflix documentary. It, it got exposed. Yeah, got, I thought when that was exposed, and yeah, the documentary came out and all that stuff even before the documentary. Yeah, I'm like okay, well now they're not going to have to play golf in 140 degree weather. Mm-hmm. No, they still did. Yeah, yeah, and and <laughs> well, well the. The, the soccer World Cup in particular, where they brought in all these workers and they were building the stadiums and all these kinds of things, and they mm-hmm. had all these human violations and human rights and all this kind of stuff, and they proved all of it. Mm-hmm. And, and the world uh, recognized it and mm-hmm. was like, yeah, that's wrong. And then the Qataris changed, or it was fe- 
maybe I, I don't remember what organization had something to do with it, but they changed their tune once the World Cup started, and they were like, "Well, now we're not going to allow beer here anymore, and now we're not going to do this." Mm-hmm. And you know, and they just had all the control, and everybody just kind of bowed down to it and was like, yep. "Yeah, well, we're just going to keep watching. It's cool." We changed our name a little bit, fired that guy, and look, there's a rainbow flag over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah. Yeah. you guys, and that once again, that's called sports wa- washing, sports washing, yep. white yep. washing, sports washing, yep. uh, and I, I guess it works. It's an interesting term because that's really pretty much what happened with the yeah. the soccer game I'm, as well. But I mean, the, those human rights infractions just on building those stadiums and people were dying mm-hmm. building the stadiums. They weren't even you know providing with water and things like they this. were being lied to yeah. to get them there. Yeah. I mean, all kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> but it it is what it is now. And if and once again. You want to go back to the root cause and evil and this and that. If the PGA Tour wouldn't have been so greedy mm-hmm. over the last 20, 30, 40 years, the door wouldn't even been open for something like this sure. to happen. Yeah. Do you think, you really think, you know, 70 of your top uh, born and raised in the United States golfers wanted to go over to Saudi Arabia and mm-hmm. play for them? Mm-hmm. Of course not. Yeah. You want to play for the tour that they grew up watching, yep. that their dads watched, that, yeah. you know, that their relatives got them involved, you know, like... So I I put I don't put I try not to put too much blame on live, um, and I, but it's kind of it's tricky because you don't want to be pro live either. Mm. Um, but I I am in my crosshairs. It's the PGA Tour. Yeah, you know that's who I'm yeah. going to come down on. The uh, just the uh, the greed, mm. you know, in what they had going on and treat your players better, treat your people better. Yeah. Yep. And their their arrogance as well. Oh yeah, big time. You know, that mm-hmm. bit them. Yep, it sure did. And they really thought that they could just poo-poo it and it would go away. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until they got about six months into it, like, oh, my God, they're the live tour is losing, losing money hand over fist, but they're not stopping. Where's all this money coming from? Yeah. You know, if it was a, a normal business situation in the United States, Nike, your sponsor, would back out. <laughs> right. Like, what are we yeah. doing here? No yeah. way. That's not the set of rules that they were playing by. Right. They should have just been smarter and knew that their money was unlimited right. with Liv. Like, come on, PGA. Like, I even know that. Like, That's kind of the point of this is dumbass. that they, those you know, guys like, decided. I shouldn't say that, but really. Those like, guys decided up front to take a stance yeah. and try to make people feel bad when they should have known. Like, you can't, you, you you can't, can't beat this one. Uh, even, like, I, I heard a quote from a, a general, I forget his name, but uh, it was with the Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. And it was a Vietnamese general. And he said, the thing that the United States never understood, they could pour all this money into it. They could send all these troops over here. They could get other countries involved. But we're the ones that are going to live here in the end. So we're not going to give up. We're just going to keep fighting. Mm -hmm. And what happened? It it was an embarrassment for the United States. Mm -hmm. And and to me, it was the same type of deal. Like, didn't you understand up front that they're playing by a different set of rules. Absolutely. Right. It's not just a geopolitical move for them. It's not yeah. just a, yeah. we're just going to crush this little league over here type of deal for them. Like, uh, Come so, on. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, PGA, they got spanked, but all the higher-ups still got to write their own positions, and right. now they're chairman of a new league. So. Yeah, and they're real happy about it. Yep, we all learned something here, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, <laughs> Lee. Good info. Well, yeah, I mean, I hope, uh, as I said, I mean, I, I've, I've heard a lot of stuff on the radio and on news and reading and whatever about it, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm sure other folks have as well. I feel like I probably listen to more of that stuff than a lot of people do just because, mm-hmm. you know, how much driving I do and with our podcast and stuff like that, and even I didn't fully understand it. So right. I wanted to try to get this perspective out to the common folk like us, understand yep. what's going on. Here's here's what we see. Yep. We're calling a spade a spade. There you go. It's pretty hard to argue with the things, the, the points that we made here. It's all facts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess you can take that info and, and, and do what you want. With yeah. It. I, I'm still, and here I'll turn a lot of people off. I like Bryson DeChambeau, okay? I like the guy. He's zany. He's weird. He's kind of, a, <laughs> he's really arrogant. He works out. He, but, I mean, Whatever. He's really good at golf. Give yeah. him his due. Yeah. <laughs> and I like yeah. characters. I don't know. He's a character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with golf um, over the next year or two. Oh, big time. Yeah. And I don't, I suspect that not really anything's going to change. You know, people are just going to fall no. back in line. And But I do think you're going to have that, like, you know, JV versus the varsity type mm-hmm. of riff. Got to like, be. A yeah. lot of those guys, and they're already talking about the Ryder Cup. Well, like, well, who's going to be captain? Will be, he be able to pick live players and this and that? Like, those are going to be fascinating. Yeah. That mm-hmm. will be. Yeah. Well, people stay tuned. Um, mm-hmm. And maybe it'll be something that we'll talk about, and I'll leave that up to you. All righty. Right. I'm sure there'll be plenty to <laughs> get into. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
All right. Well, all right, all right. boys. Anything else? That sounds I think good. That wraps it up pretty yeah. good, huh? All righty. Peace. All right. Cool. Later. We're out.